ladies and gentlemen, Universal Mastery. Welcome back to my public YouTube channel where I break down the occult sciences and I break them down to a very, very practical degree so that you can simply use them and apply them in your day-to-day -day life and get real, actual results with exactly what it is that I'm teaching. Simply by applying your observation and awareness. Very practical to do, okay? For those of you that are new, let me give you a little bit of a perspective on who I am just so that you know who you're getting this information from because that is very important when it comes to psychic self-development, okay? My name is Jeremiah Schwartz. I am a professional occultist. I am fully initiated in the entirety of the Kabbalistic tree. I'm studied when it comes to the 22 major arcana of the tarot deck, and I'm also studied when it comes to planetary energies in direct association with astrology, okay? So what exactly are we going to be talking about in our today's video, okay? We are specifically going to be talking about the abyss, okay? I'm going to be discussing a couple influences of the abyss because I've talked to many people in my life that have mentioned, I have been through the crossing of the abyss. I've talked to many people that have said, I've, I swear I've experienced the abyss before um, in my life. I've gone through the crossing. Um, I can tell because, Jeremiah, I've watched your videos. I've heard you break down the experience of crossing the abyss. I now know what it's like. I have the knowledge, and I can promise you I've been through that in my past. Okay, so for those of you that are listening, if you want to know a little bit more about this subject and maybe get an answer to this question as to why there are so many individuals that feel like they've crossed the abyss before, then this is definitely the video that is meant for you. So you have one thing to do, and that's simply to stay tuned. Okay, so let's go into it. So the question, once again, look, I swear I've been through the abyss before. I've received a reading from you. I've talked to somebody else before in my life that was knowledgeable on the Kabbalistic tree. I've done my own research. Um, and it shows that I probably have not gone through the death crossing. Okay, like based on my level of current experience and initiation and even understanding, I swear I don't think I've actually crossed death, but at the same time, I actually kind of feel like I have crossed death because I've been through the abyssal experience before. I felt the energies of the abyss. So what exactly does this mean? So if you're somebody who's listening to me right now and you're thinking these exact same thoughts and I'm literally speaking to an aspect of your own soul, then you're obviously in the right place at the right time because I'm going to break this down. Um, so, hey, my cat's right here. Oh, she just ran away. I was going to show you guys my cat. She's a feisty one. Um, but yeah, let's go into it. So the reality is, is that there are different locations within the abyss, okay? Um, let's discuss this a little bit. So when you look at the Kabbalistic tree, there are going to be different veils that you have to cross, okay? I believe the first veil is the veil of the profane, and then the second veil is the veil of Perokith, okay? And the archetypal path that crosses from Malkuth into Yesod across that first veil is going to be known as the archetype of the world, okay? The archetype of the world is associated with the planetary energy of Saturn, which also has its energetic resonance to the third sphere on the Kabbalistic tree, which is ruled by Saturn, which is the sphere of Binah, the dark feminine. It's the highest feminine sphere on the Kabbalistic tree. Okay, this is all very important to understand to get an idea of what this initiatory system is like and how it can actually influence you. So clearly, in order to cross that veil of the profane, which is the first veil, you have to travel across that archetypal pathway. Now, 
crossing any veil, no matter what veil it is, whether it's the profane, whether it's the paroketh, or whether it is literally the high priestess archetype crossing the death hidden 11th sphere. Every veil crossing and every veil-like experience is going to be dramatic. It is going to be a big experience. It is going to be one of those experiences that is sort of like mind-shattering to the point where there is almost an inherent ego death that is going to follow it, okay? So what I'm basically saying is that when someone goes from Malkuth, which is the material dimension, the physical plane, and then they begin their initiatory process, moving from Malkuth into Yasod at the starting point, there is a abyssal experience that has to take place just to get a person energetically prepared to enter into the sphere of Yasod. And once again, for those of you that are listening that want to know the klebothic reflux of what I'm talking about, simply just switch the spheres over and bring it into the klebothic. Okay, so rather than Malkuth and Yasod, we can switch it for Nama and Gamaliel. Okay? So with that being said, this is one of the reasons why so many people have experienced the abyss. So many people feel that deep resonance. Now, there's this, you know, this obviously can get nuanced. I mean, there are a lot of you that have past lives where you've actually been through the initiatory s structure before and you've actually been through the major crossing of the abyss over the 11th sphere. But then there's a good portion of you who have not been through that major crossing of the abyss yet, but you've been through the lower aspects of the crossing of the abyss, crossing over the veils, okay? And the veils are never, once again, it is always going to be a challenging experience. It is always going to be followed by some sort of a death-like energy, death of se sense of self-identity, death of uh, habits, certain thoughts, beliefs, mindsets, perspectives, social circles even, relationships, you name it. It's always going to be followed by some sort of energy along those lines. Now, once again, we just talked about the veil of the profane crossed over by the uh, 32nd path, which is the path of the world. Now, the other veil is going to be crossed over from the sphere of Netzach over into the sphere of Tifereth, which is ruled by the archetypal path of death itself. So literally, to make that next veil crossing, it's primarily taking place through the archetype of death. And this is very strategic, and this is in place for a reason. This is a Kabbalistic law. This is a Kabbalistic principle that is not randomly put there. This is to show the nature of what the abyss is like. And for the initiate who's traveling from the bottom of the tree trying to get to the top to fully understand their soul and their and the source itself, these crossings of these lower veils are absolutely essential to energetically prepare you for the major crossing, the third major crossing, which then takes place after the sphere of Chesed. Then you enter into Tifereth, and then you go through the, center, the central path of the high priestess. Uh, that is the major crossing of the abyss where you actually enter into, let's just put it, a very dense location of primal chaos that is in direct association with your unconscious mind. You are that primal chaos. But to actually consciously go there, that would be the experience of the abyss where you literally start to become very conscious of the unconscious mind. Okay, It's like waking up from the dream. Okay, and being able to even be in the dream awake and see it. Okay, that's a very different experience. So one of the main value points for me making this video right now is to just give some people some clarity as to why they may have this deep feeling of, oh yeah, I've been through the abyss. I've crossed the abyss before. Trust me, I know I have. I, I can just tell. I've been through this death experience in my past. I remember when I went through this time and it was just like what you're talking about. But remember, there are a lot of you that have actually not been through the major crossing of the abyss. A lot of you have not crossed over that 11th hidden sphere of death and have gained that deep level of self-knowledge that comes with it. A lot of you are still preparing and working up till that point. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Don't just immediately jump to conclusions and assumptions that, oh, you know, I've been through this in my past, so that must mean I am a high-level magician or I've just, I've gone through the major crossing. 
okay? Just once again, take that into consideration. Now, once again, on the other hand, to flip the script, there are some of you listening that literally have been through the major crossing. I know this for a fact, okay? So for those of you uh, individuals, you know, obviously you trust your intuition and your intuition will, will always uh, guide you properly. And that past life experience with the abyss, once again, is a part of your genetic code. You've been through the archetypal mind. You've essentially cr uh, completed the great work in a different lifetime. That's why you probably already have that energetic experience built into your DNA. You already know what the experience is truly like. But I would say for sure it is less common for these type of individuals to exist. It's more common for people to have been through the lower veils and start the approach towards the third major crossing, okay? And uh, just to give a little bit of a context of what the major crossing is like, it's the same concept as the story of Isis or the story of Ishtar, where Ishtar had to go through seven different gates in order to even, I believe it was, get to the underworld so that she could fight, I think it was her sister, and do something, you know, get, get something in return, get some sort of power and ability in return. Or, or revenge or something in that nature. But the point that I'm trying to make is those seven gates that is known within this mythology of Ishtar is literally directly connected to the seven lower spheres, Malkuth, Yasod, Hod, Netzach, Tifereth, Gavua, said. And then as she's sacrificing a piece of clothing at each sphere or at each gate, that's symbolic of the transformation, the energetic change and transmutation that she had to go through moving throughout that Kabbalistic structure, moving throughout her own archetypal mind, dealing with the planetary energies in the multiverse or in the matrix, as well as the archetypal influences that follow them. Okay, once again, with the sole purpose of understanding the self. And then when she got to that final, final gate, which was the seventh gate, that's when the big crossing took place. So that's significant of this final sphere of Chesed and then the death crossing, okay? Death also being associated with death, death energy, okay? A big, heavy death energy. A complete sacrifice of the self to the self. And just to give you some more clarity, like when you look at the symbol of the cross, and I'll actually make a whole different video on this because I think it deserves one, but when you look at the traditional Christian symbol or even the Catholic symbol of the cross itself, what do you think that symbol comes from? Where do you think that symbol originated? If you actually look at it and you pull up a picture of the Kabbalistic tree, you're going to see that if you connect the sphere from Tifereth to the top of the tree, Kether, and then you see the lower, I, excuse me, not the lower, but that, that smaller bar that goes in the center and crosses over, that would connect from the sphere of Bina to Chokma. So the symbol of the cross itself is a symbol associated with the crossing of the abyss. It's even embedded in the word, the cross, C-R-O-S-S, -S, okay? So once again, it's right in front of our faces. It's always been there. It's programmed into our DNA. The big crossing of the abyss is very profound. That is what's known as completing the great work. As you can imagine, there are not many individuals who have actually completed the great work. Now, when I say that, you, you know, I'm not referring to like there's like 10 people on the planet. There are thousands of people on the planet, thousands upon thousands of people on the planet that have completed the great work. But when you compare that to the mass collective, it's a small sliver of individual. It's a small sliver of entity that has completed the great work. And that's what it is. It's the big crossing. So once again, for those of you that are listening, you know, take this into your awareness and for sure for yourself, don't jump to any conclusions because if you start building up an identity and an ego that makes you think you're farther than where you actually are, when that time actually comes, you may not be as prepared as you think you are, okay? You don't want to have to be in a position where the universe humbles yourself. You don't want to have to, but it happens. I mean, I've, it's happened to me many times, okay? That's how I learn oftentimes. So, you know, you may be a little bit like me in that sense, but I, I'm also someone that's very good at adapting very good at recognizing and reflecting. Let's put it that way, reflecting, okay? Going inside of myself. 
there are other people that don't have that ability as well as I do and they don't go as far. Okay? So once again, that's the message that I wanted to get across. If this was a video that offered you value, then what you need to do is come down here and hit that thumbs up button. The reason is, is because we're trying to spread this content. We're trying to show YouTube. We're going to make YouTube recognize universal mastery. Okay? So let's go ahead and hit that thumbs up button, especially if you gain value. Also, come down here and hit that notification bell. Get notified whenever I post because this content is extremely valuable. And could you imagine if you didn't come across this content? Could you imagine if you didn't have this knowledge, if you didn't have this information, how unfortunate that would be? Well, you can simply tap into always having access to this information by hitting that notification bell. So do it. Okay. Also, come down here and hit the subscribe button because if you're not yet subscribed to my public YouTube channel, then I promise you're making a very big mistake because you could further be linking into the content by subscribing. There really is an energetic component to that. So tap in. If not, forget about it. It is what it is. Okay. Next thing I want to say is you have my full permission to copy and paste this link and send it out to anybody, family, friends, social media platforms, you name it. You have my full permission to send this content and information out. Okay. My intention is to spread my content like a wildfire and to increase my empire in the process. And that is exactly what I've been doing. Okay. So let's continue to do that. Now, the next thing I want to say is come right down here and you're going to see there is my Instagram handle. Go ahead and add me on Instagram. It's super easy to type in. J-E-R underscore 477. Super easy. Check me out on social media platforms. I post very unique things there. Okay. Also, if you go into the YouTube description, you're going to see that there is a link somewhere in there that you can request to join my TikTok. And I post short clips from my YouTube channel, valuable clips, and then I send them over to the TikTok. So if you want to see me on TikTok, definitely look into that. Okay. I also want to say if you want to join a private Facebook community, this is also within the YouTube description. You'll see the post with a link underneath of it. You click that link, follow where that link takes you, and you're going to see there is an entire private Facebook community that has over 600 members. People are posting on a daily basis, and I can personally attest there is tons of valuable information within that community. Okay. And it is private. So you have to request to join. And if you do not act harmoniously amongst the community, you will get booted. Okay. So if this is something you want to join, you now, you now know exactly where to go. Okay. Now I'm about to take your awareness to literally the most important link within the entirety of the YouTube description. Okay. This is the first link in the YouTube description. Click that little drop down. First link right there. This is where you can join my Patreon. On my Patreon, I have an entire vault of exclusive occult content. None of this content is on my public channel, and that is for many, many, many intentional reasons. Okay, The content is strategically created for people that are investing more time and energy into their practices. Okay, With that being said, I have content that is very similar to this, giving out tons of valuable information. I have content in the form of live streams, question-answer format, which is tons of valuable information embedded within those live streams. Uh, and I have like literally over 50 of them on the Patreon, accessible, all mostly over an hour long. Um, and then uh, there's content that is in the form of practical content, content that is literally me teaching you fundamental practices. And all of this is, ac is accessible by simply joining the Patreon. Then as you move into Tier 3 and up, you're gaining access to an entire magic training course, which I feel like would be extremely valuable, especially if you're a beginner occultist and you're looking for a structured format to follow to start developing your psychic capabilities. Okay. Then as you move into Tier number 4, this is literally the top tier. This is not just the top tier. This is literally the most popular tier, and that alone should speak for itself. This is what I call the Universe B vampire service and this is a specific ritual that I perform on all of the new participants as well as all of the existing participants which means if you remain top tier you get this service performed on you every single month okay so what it's what it is designed to do is completely change your energetic structure to be more so what I call universe B dominance which basically means it strengthens your negative polarity so what this means is that you now have an ability to exist within the darker energy areas and locations of our multiverse today 
without being harmed by them directly, but instead develop knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and potential power instead. Okay. It also gives these individuals an ability to be more so receptive to their unconscious and subconscious mind, which is feminine in nature, one of the keys to the left-hand path and the darker evolutionary sciences. And it also gives these individuals an ability to pull in energy from dark energy and chaos in their environment to ultimately transmute into their power and evolutionary potential. Okay. If this is something that you feel intuitively is right for you and something that you should take advantage of, then I encourage you to do that. Okay. Fourth tier, top tier, first link in the YouTube description. We're going to leave it there. Okay. With that being said, huge shout out to all of you specifically, ladies and gentlemen, who are taking your knowledge, studies, and practices really to that other side. That's never going to go unknown. And I'm not just speaking for myself. I'm speaking for the universe when I say that. Okay. Um, now I'm going to take your awareness to the second link in the YouTube description. This is where you can book your very unique tarot card reading from me. Okay. So as I've mentioned many times, I'm a professional occultist. And with that, I understand the Kabbalistic tree way more than the average person. So what I can do within this reading is I can literally pinpoint exactly where you are on that Kabbalistic structure. I can tell you what you're feeling, experiencing, and going through in the present moment, and then tell you what to expect moving into your near and your long-term future, all based on your positioning on that Kabbalistic tree. Okay, I don't know anybody else that knows how to do that, especially the way that I do. Okay, I've done well over 650 readings at this point. I do a reading almost every single day. I've been doing it for over a year now uh, for other people. I've been doing it for myself a total of like seven years now. Um, and I get tons of valuable feedback. So if you want to tap into it, second link below, we'll leave it there. Keep it simple. Uh, now, oh, let me say this as well. Also, if you want to book a one on one call with me, Okay, if you want to get some one on one conversation, if you have any questions in regards to the occult, if you have anything that you want to discuss or whatever the case is, you can book a one on one with me, a one on one call where we do video call, FaceTime, or whatever type of video call, maybe through a different platform. Um, and you can book that at the second link below as well. So the same link that you book the tarot card readings is where you can book your one on one call with me. And I also have some options for mentorship. So for people that are really taking their practices to that other side, you have an ability to literally book one-on-one -on -one calls with me for six weeks or for three months. Okay, so if this is something you're interested in, check out that second link. And you can also read more about the details within the services themselves. But this is something that I've just newly opened up to my YouTube channel. And I've really enjoyed doing one-on-one -on -one calls. I've done one-on-one -on -one calls with a bunch of people so far, a lot of uh, the continuous viewers to my channel. And I've been asked many great questions and I've had a really good time uh, and experience myself having these calls. So I thought I would turn it into a service. Okay. So go ahead and do that. If that's something you're interested in. Then as you move into the third link below within the YouTube description, this is where you can become a YouTube member. Okay. As you become a YouTube member, you're getting access to many different abilities. Okay. You enter into the YouTube community, which is a wonderful community. Uh, you get special shout outs whenever I do live streams. Okay. You get an ability to leave a question every month that appears in the same format as a super chat when you're a YouTube member. And I always cover that first and foremost and in the most depth. Uh, but most importantly, you're gaining access to what I call the psychic warfare emoji program, which is a sequence of emojis that I've designed myself that are based on real occult principles that can be used in a specific configuration and then you link in the name of a target, hit enter, and it actually causes psychic effects to that target. Okay, This is the most simple form of utilizing psychic warfare through the internet platform, and you can literally take advantage of it right now. Okay, um, There are almost 2,000 posts where individuals have used this service. There are even people that are using it in this moment. If this is something that you want to use as well, you can definitely do so. It is the third link. You click it, become a YouTube member, then you'll gain access. Okay. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, this is where I'm going to wrap it up. I appreciate you all so very much. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day or night, wherever you are. And I will see you in the very, very near future. Peace.